Hey everybody, here we're looking at the main TV box. Had to pull it out of service today just for a little bit because the fans in this power supply are making a lot of noise. Or at least they do when you first start the computer cold. I cleaned this thing out yesterday and unfortunately now I didn't get on video, sorry. But anyways, I cleaned it out yesterday and when I plugged it back in and started it, these fans were running a bit slower and they were rattling like crazy. Doesn't surprise me, I mean this is a cheap rim power supply. Probably some of the cheapest fans you'll find. I mean the brand is called Wham! If that gives you an idea. So I figured let's just go and open this thing and take a look. We're gonna green we're gonna oil these fans or replace them. One of the two. Typically, um typically they, they probably just need some oil. And I'm getting a set top box for the for the front TV due to some intermittent issues with Windows Media Center crashing. That's a long, that's a different story. And a matter of fact, it may not still be having that issue anymore. But anyways, let's go ahead and open this thing up. This will also be, I guess you can say an update on how this thing looking on the inside after running for many months. I replaced the power supply in this machine back, I think last summer or last fall. And I upgraded, well let's modify this power supply fresh out of the box with proper EMI filtering and re, um, some replacement capacitors on the secondary, you know, some things like that. Here we are. You know, despite just a little bit of dust, I see it looks pretty healthy. <clears throat> Let's have a look. <clears throat> Let's see inside this unit. And... You know, anytime I'm always, anytime I, you know, modify a cheaper power supply and put it in service for 24-hour use, um, I always kind of wonder how it how it's doing after a few months of use. As you can see, everything inside here looks like it's pretty healthy. No bulging capacitors, nothing like that. No burnt spots that I can see. I'd say this unit will probably last for many years. No issues whatsoever, other than fans. I mean, if the fan sees up, it'll overheat, and of course, you know what can happen then. You can see the um, rectifier bridge there. You can, see, you can tell that things have been a little hot. Obviously, the glue has darkened just a little bit around some components. That's normal, though. I just took this thing out of service like five minutes ago. <laughs> yep. It looks pretty healthy from what I see. No issues that I can see. No, no issues at all. So, let's go ahead and take these fans out and service them. One thing I do like about this power supply is that it gives you really easy access to the fans, to the fan connections. But I don't think we need to unplug those just yet. We may not have to unplug them at all. So there's a better look at the fans. They don't feel like they're t they're tight or anything. It's just the bearings are probably a little bit dry. But let's go ahead and peel these stickers back and see what we have here. You can see what I'm doing here. Again, this is my first time lubing them. And it appears to be the kind that um, <laughs> you apparently cannot lube. Well, that's great. That's lovely. Yep, so we're going from a simple fan lube to fan replacement. These are 60 millimeter fans. I'll have to see if I can find some, some drop-in replacements. I'll have to wire them up to these connectors. Interesting. Okay, everybody, here we're looking at the power supply. I took both fans out. They're still dangling by the wires. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just chop the wires about here and here there. And it's wired to new fans in directly. I'm not going to even bother taking all this out. No sense in it. I can just snip the wires and wire them in directly. What I'll do is I'll wire the fans in and use heat strength to um, cover, the, cover up the connections. 
make it look nice and neat. Now let's go and look at what we have for donor fans. Here we go. <laughs> These are two older um, Athlon XP retail, well, no, stock coolers, box coolers, rather, the ones that come with the CPU. See a, little, see a nice AMD hologram. You know, it's amazing. <laughs> These these older heat sinks from AMD have very nice holograms. Fast forward to today's box coolers. This is what you get. Yeah, it looks like a pretty generic thing. <laughs> this little model or whatever. Yeah. Don't even have an AMD hologram anymore. But anyways, these fans are typically made by Delta. Some of you guys may remember back in... 2012, let's say? Yes, yeah, 2012. Remember that graphics card, my 6750? The fan that failed on after three months of constant use? I used a fan from an Athlon XP heatsink, just like that. And guess what? It's still working fine after, what, close to three years later? No problems at all. Runs just fine. So I'm pretty well sure if it's going to run like that for many years and a graphics card it should run fine in a power supply. So anyway, we're just going to take these out and see what we have here. Okay, I got them taken off of the coolers. These are actually ABC fans, Asia Vital Components fans. Not Deltas as I had previously thought. Now the fan that is in the Mid-Tower Lux video card is a Delta. I do remember. However, both of these fans are of decent quality, no doubt. I mean, look, they're ball bearings. So obviously, they're built to last. They'll last many years. They, yeah, they appear to be just fine. So I'll go ahead and, and prep them to be installed. Anyways, there you go. Now generally when it comes to ABC, you do, you do kind of have to watch out for their hydraulic bearing fans. Those do tend to dry out after a few years and they're kind of hard to oil when they do. But the ball bearing fans, you're pretty much good to go. So we're going to go ahead and use these. First I have to make sure they do mount up to the power supply okay. Okay, so the front seems to be okay. So how about the rear? Let's see. And yes, I'm going to leave the AMD holograms in there just for laughs. <laughs> After all, this is an AMD-based computer <laughs> we're using here. Power supply should reflect it as well. You know, getting the back fan is a little tricky. Got to work your way around some things. 5-volt standby inductors right there. You have to kind of work your way around it. But it appears these fans will do the trick just fine. Let me make sure that they will bolt down okay. Because obviously we're using standard case fan screws for these rather than the screws you normally find in a CPU fan. I think they'll work just fine for that, but let's just double check before I strip any wires, obviously. I don't want to use the WAM fans again. <laughs> yes, guys. I got something good coming for the WAM fans. And yes, it's going to probably involve a hammer, or at least slamming them, you know, wham. Anyways. <laughs> yes, I'm almost up to 3 million views on my channel, so it might be something, something to do. Maybe something better, I don't know. You know guys, I did a video about 1 million views. I think I'm out, since I never got it uploaded, I think it'll get used for the 3 million view video. <laughs> Anyways. Yes, yeah, so these fans will mount just fine. No issues at all. So that being said, we'll go ahead and strip some wires and install them. So, grab this little guy. This handy little thing. Looks kind of crazy, don't it? It's a wire stripper. And it's very easy to use. I got this in that Walmart for like a few bucks a while back. I've had it for Probably two or three years. More than that, actually, I think. This snip. 
And I'm going to completely snip off the tack wire. Don't, we don't even need that. Let's demonstrate the stripping ability of my stripper. Just, I'm actually going to move this out of the way just a little bit. And it's wham fans. <laughs> now we do. Take our stripper. That easy. And just leave the, the insulation on there for now until we're ready to actually, you know, wire the things together. That way our wires won't get all frayed up. I did take the wire, I did take the ones off of these. And we just twist the wires down, you know. Typical affair with doing wiring, things like that. Now, it's about time we take these wham fans off of here. And it's time for them to go. Bye bye. Here, everybody, now we'll go ahead and fuse our heat shrink to the wire. We'll melt it down. We'll heat it up, actually. <laughs> okay, I've applied heat to the heat shrink. Now, unfortunately, my lighter is a little hard to control, so I kind of charred the wire up just a little bit there, and just a little bit here but it didn't burn it didn't burn the insulation off or anything just kind of charred it just a little bit no big deal so let's go ahead and reinstall these fans and this will be a done deal okay the replacement fans have been installed now let's go ahead and do the cover okay everybody got the cover reinstalled also zip tied some wires in there as well Keep things nice and tidy inside of it. Anyways, there it is. With the AVC fans installed. As you may be able to see, the AMD hologram is still there. Obviously, we have an AMD processor in the machine. The power supply should reflect that as well. <laughs> now, it's going to reinstall this thing back to the case. Okay, everybody, power supply has been reinstalled to the case. And it's been closed up. There it is. TV box is ready to go back into service. There it is. So anyways, that was a video of me replacing the fans and the TV box power supply. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Any questions or comments? Feel free to ask and thanks for watching.